coming up on the Paw Report. Keeping your pets flea-free is important for a variety of reasons. Right, guys? Dr. Marcy Kirk from Alvin Animal Hospital in Mattoon and Charleston will be here this week to tell us everything we need to know about flea control. That's coming up, so stay tuned. Welcome to the Paul Report. I'm your host, Kate Pleasant. Today we're talking about fleas, kind of a common problem with some household pets and something we definitely need to prevent. I'm here with Dr. Marcy Kirk from Alban Animal Hospitals in Mattoon and Charleston. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me. And first of all, do you just want to tell us in general kind of about fleas? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, fleas are a big problem that we mm -hmm. are seeing a lot of. People kind of forgot about it because we had good products that were out and really helping them, but mm -hmm. we've seen a definite increase. And they're a little tiny parasite that basically feed on blood uh, and most warm blooded animals. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, your dogs, your cats, things like that. Um, and they suck the blood and then they multiply. A female flea can lay up to 40 eggs a day. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, so <laughs> it can become a big problem very quickly. Okay. So it is something that, you know, we want to get under control and, you know, really be aggressive about preventing because once they get settled in your house, you know, it can become a major issue. Sure, because it's, you know, once they're on your dog, that can be carried into your house, right? Yes. And what, what is it that they like? Why do they stick around on our animals? Yeah, and that's a really good question. And nobody uh, knows the exact answer because there is a definite preference for the animal over the, the human. Right, as I say, because you don't really hear about people having yeah, fleas Yeah, so unless so. there's a really heavy infestation, right. we don't usually hear people saying that they have flea bites. And, mm -hmm. and that's an excuse we, we hear a lot of. Um, well, that my dog doesn't have fleas because I don't have any flea bites. Or, you know, I get mosquito bites all the time, so I would get the flea bite. But right. they really, truly prefer the animal, but nobody really knows why. So, <laughs> and you know, just because you don't see them doesn't mean they're not there. Because if you think about our pets, they groom very regularly. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to be looking for is evidence of okay. the fleas, which is going to be, you know, your dog just suddenly is walking and turns around and bites at its rear end really quickly. That okay. might be a sign that something, you know, has bit it mm -hmm. um, and they may ingest it then. And, you know, a lot of times they'll be very itchy and reddened um, okay. and kind of lose some hair because they're chewing it themselves quite a bit. Right. Um, but like I said, a lot of times we even can't find a live flea on them, but there is um, what we call flea dirt, mm -hmm. uh, which is little black specks that okay. will be on their uh, fur. And that's basically flea poop, which mm -hmm. is blood. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's another sign that we kind of look for on, on the animals to, to let us know if that's, if it's just an allergy or maybe we've got a flea issue going okay. on. And when should you contact your veterinarian or take your animal in when, is it immediately when you suspect fleas or? I think it's a really good idea to, to talk to your veterinarian because I, you know, we, every time we see a pet, especially a new puppy or something like that, we try to talk about flea prevention and things like that. So mm -hmm. it doesn't get settled into your environment. Right. So we can kind of nip it in the bud right away. Um, but if you suspect fleas, I would definitely talk to your veterinarian, maybe set up an appointment, because there are a lot of choices out there on flea preventions, you know, and we want to make sure you have the right one for your animal. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really important to work with your veterinarian because the market is flooded with all kinds of choices and sure. some are good some you know don't work as well and some can even be hazardous so it's really important to check with your veterinarian before you put anything on on your pet and you know we see a lot of you know flea collars and things like that and for the most part those work right where they're at you know okay. but yeah that's gonna be my question because yeah. you, you think you know people think that it works over the whole body of no, an it, it, yeah, it just focuses on that one area. So yeah, the, the dog doesn't have fleas there, but <laughs> you know there might be some further sure. back. And okay. the same with shampoos. You know, they they may kill the fleas that are on them, but as soon as that dog goes or cat, you know, goes right back outside, they're just going to get reinfested. There's no lasting protection. Mm -hmm. So that's why we really focus on you know prevention, so that you don't have to worry about you know treating it. Because a lot of people are like, well, I I have hardwood floors, so they can't really set up shop, but right. they can live in the cracks of the houses and things Ooh. like that. And, uh -huh. you know, obviously your, your house is very well regulated temperature wise. Sure. So that's a, a great area for them to thrive all year. So uh -huh. if they set up shop, you know, early on and, you know, we have a hard winter, they're still in your house okay. and, you know, so. Yeah, and is it the case if you maybe have one animal that has fleas and you have other animals, 
do they jump? Because you always hear about fleas jumping. Yes. You know, and yeah. They and it's pretty impressive. You know, when you, when we see them and we try to get them off the animal, you mm -hmm. know, they're jumping all over the place. Right. And it's hard to catch them, you know, because we don't want to put them back on the animal. Right. But yeah, and that's that's another thing that's really important is they get on the animal. Usually they pick them up in the environment somewhere, mm -hmm. and you know, a dog goes outside. They pick it up, and they come in and they can spread it to any of the animals in the house. Mm -hmm. You know, and actually, as thick as the fleas have been, they've kind of been hitchhiking on people's pant legs. Really? And things, you know, so we don't notice them, and then you're bringing them in as well, because we'll have people that have insight only cats. They never, ever go outside, sure. and they are covered with fleas. And they're like, well, how did that happen? And I said, it's just been so thick lately mm -hmm. that they're coming in on you. They don't want to be on you. They so they, be on they well, transfer like to the animal. Well, like you said, they multiply, multiply, multiply. So. Yeah, and so it only takes, you know, one, mm -hmm. and then it, just, it can become <laughs> a big issue very quickly. Right. So. Is there a certain seasons for fleas? I, I assume we should treat our animals all year long. Yeah, I, I, I like to recommend year-round treatment. First of all, I don't want the fleas in my house. I don't want to deal with them, mm -hmm. so I, I just keep my animals on it year-round. It used to be, you know, when we had a first hard frost, you could lay off the flea prevention and start up when it started getting warm again. But if you remember last year, it was very warm, mm -hmm. kind of unseasonably mm -hmm. warm. It was and a strange winter. Yeah, so we saw fleas up until the week before Christmas. I was, you know, oh, wow. and not just one or two, I mean, infestations. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's really important to go year round, but the typical seasons are the warm times of year. Right. And actually, you know, there are four stages of the life cycle. Okay. And so a lot of the products, you know, are target one or two, but freezing is the only thing that kills all of them. Okay. So we need really hard frost to get rid of them and, and really be done with them. So to be safe though, treat your animals 12 yeah, months out of the because year. Because like we talked about, they can set up shop in your house. So mm -hmm. even though it's cold outside, there may not be any outside, but if they were there, you know, a few months ago, they can hibernate sure. and, you know, hatch out. Mm -hmm. And they've got this animal that maybe is not on preventative anymore because it's cold out mm -hmm. and it's a perfect host for them. Okay. And so what is it? that's dangerous about fleas to pets? Well, so if, you know, one or two fleas, they, they suck a little blood, you know, mm -hmm. that's not a big issue. But when you get heavy infestations, they can actually suck so much blood that your pet can become anemic, where they're not, they don't have enough red blood cells anymore, um, which then your red blood cells, what's carry oxygen and, you mm -hmm. know, energy and things like that. Sure. And so they become very weak and um, they, they can die from it which, you know, didn't used to be too much of an issue, but here, you know, lately we've had kind of an upswing of, of fleas because we didn't kill them off in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there, there are, you know, some instances where they can carry some diseases, but we don't see that too often. It's usually the anemia that we, okay. we have an issue with. The other thing that they do, if your pet ingests a flea, mm -hmm. they can get tapeworms. Oh, okay. Um, so, so that's yeah. a cause of that. I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. So uh, they, they get those from ingesting the flea. Mm -hmm. And it looks like, you know, a lot of times people call it, my dog has worms. And we'll be like, what do they look like? Right. <laughs> and it'll be like little pieces of rice. Okay. Or if they're on your floor and they get dried out, they look like sesame seeds, you know. Oh. So, and that basically, it's usually not fatal, but okay. it's cosmetically, you know, nobody likes to see worms. Yeah, that's kind of gross. Um, and they can also lose a little bit of weight because mm -hmm. the worms are stealing nutrients from the animal that they should be using. Okay. So, um, that, and that's easily treated, you know, okay. call your veterinarian, yeah, they can say, get yeah, some good to know. tablets and, and it takes care of it. Now, if you don't get the fleas under control, they can just get reinfected and it takes about three weeks to show up again. So it's not mm. that the pill didn't work, it's that, you know. The infestation was never completely right, wiped out. Right, so okay. we gotta wipe it out. Okay, and what would you say is you know, how do you know if your pet has fleas? I know you said there's flea dust and things like that, and then the pet's looking, you know, maybe. But can you examine a pet at home? You know, can you look mm -hmm. for certain things? Yeah, so I mean, what we usually do, and it's much easier on lighter dogs, because right. you can see things a little bit sure. better. But what we usually do is kind of take our hands and just run them okay. up their back, and that pulls the hair apart. And you can maybe see something kind of scamper mm -hmm. across, and if you see movement, there's yeah. probably I've actually a, seen that before, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. a bug there. Or we'll look for those little you know, black dots I was talking uh -huh. about. And if you're not sure if it's d dirt or right. a flea, flea dirt, um, you can put a little bit of water on it and flea dirt will turn red because really? it's blood. Okay. Um, so, you know, that, kind that'll kind of help. Rehydrating that blood a little bit. Yeah, I just kind of, you know, so mm -hmm. we smear. So a lot of times people don't believe us that their pet has fleas and we find flea dirt, not a live flea. I'll put some on a little piece of gauze and put some water on it and it's like, you know, this isn't just normal dirt. This mm -hmm. is blood. It smears into blood yeah. color. Yeah. Okay. So that's something that they can look for. And, you know, another air, good area is where there's not a lot of hair. So on their belly sure. area. So right. that's a good place to kind of look too. But for the most part, they tend to centralize around the tail base. So that's okay. a really good place to start looking. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And what is the treatment for, say, your home? Because we know there's mm -hmm. treatments for the animals. We can put drops or pills mm -hmm. or things like that. But what's the treatment for your home when you get Yeah, fleas? so it depends on the type of you know home you're dealing with and mm -hmm. the, the amount of infestation that right. you have. Um, there are bombs and, and sprays. And again, you'd want to talk to your veterinarian, see if they know of the product, see if it's safe. Read the instructions carefully because some of them, you got to clear the house out for four hours. Right, right. Some it's a day or so. Mm -hmm. Um, but if it's a really heavy burden, I really recommend working with a professional. Because like I said, I don't want to deal sure. with it. Get I want it to be control, done. Right. Yeah, and a lot of them will have guarantees too, mm -hmm. where you know we're going to spray once. If they come back in a certain amount of time, we're going to come back and we're going to spray again. Mm -hmm. Because again, depending on what medication they're using, it may not get all of the life cycle. So you could have a hatch out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, another big thing is washing all of the bedding and everything in warm water and vacuuming. Vacuuming and dumping the bag out somewhere else or dumping your thing. You know, because it sits it away there, completely. they're, they're sure. going to hatch out sure. again. So it really, and, and actually the, the vacuuming can cause a hatch out. So you might want to vacuum then again and get those <laughs> swept up. So <laughs> oh, okay. It, so you see it becomes a very vicious cycle. Sure. To, so prevention is significantly much easier. Than, sure, that would you know, be definitely the key. It's preferable. <laughs> right, right. And so what is the process like um, when someone comes in and they say you find fleece? Mm -hmm. Where does it go from there? How does it work? So, you know, we talk about what products are going to be best for their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We take into consideration, you know, because like you said, there's topical, there's pills now, mm -hmm. um, and they all work, you know, really well. Mm -hmm. So, but it's really important to, again, talk to your veterinarian before applying anything or giving anything to your pet. Right. Um, and, you know, so then if you want to give a bath or something like that, depending on the product you use, that might determine when you're going to use the product. Right. So right. like topicals, if you give a bath, you need to wait a couple days before you put it on because otherwise sure. it's going to lose its effectiveness. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, might want to treat the secondary symptoms of itching. So depending on your animal, that might be an antihistamine, that might be a steroid, you know, depending mm -hmm. on how itchy they are while the flea medication, you know, comes into effect. Right. We've had really good success stories that, you know, people, they were using a certain product and, you know, maybe wasn't cutting it, we switched, and they said within 30 minutes to an hour, they really noticed an improvement. So if you get them on the preventative, you will hopefully start seeing results very quickly. Right. So. Okay. What about flea bass and flea mm -hmm. dip? You know, I, I know flea dipping used to be a big thing. I don't yeah. know if that's still a thing. I haven't had an animal with fleas in a long time. Yeah. So is that still something that is done? It's not as common. I, I would say now that we have, you know, back, I think it was about 30, 40 years ago when the topical products started, come, you know, hitting the market or like even some of the oral ones, mm -hmm. um, flea dips and shampoos and things like that kind of went to the wayside because these were so much more effective. Right. The drugs in those products are a little bit older, so they're probably not quite as safe as the ones we have now because they've gone through all the testing, sure. but they're also older, so okay. we see a little bit of resistance. So I, you know, we don't see that used quite as much. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they're still available, and again, I would call your veterinarian before pursuing sure. something like that, um, but we tend to stick with things that are, you know, newer, so we don't get that resistance. Okay, and has that kind of been a trend? I mean, it's like, you know, we talk about antibiotic resistance in mm -hmm. people. Has there been drug resistance in fleas over I the years? I think so, um, especially because we've had those mild winters, so mm -hmm. they're not dying off. So then we're using the same product over and over and over again, and, you know, if they're not dying right away, sure. you know, they, they do breed some resistance. I mean, that's, that's what any parasite's gonna do. They're gonna, you know, get into a situation and they're gonna try to adapt around it. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's, you know, again, if you're using a product and you just don't feel it's working, we might wanna switch to a different one and try something else just to, you know, give it a fresh, Sure, fresh face. start or yeah. try at it, I guess yeah. you'd say. So, so this is definitely something though that people should consult their veterinarians about mm -hmm. anytime they have doubt. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, cause you can, you can go into, you know, a supermarket and you can purchase a product, but mm -hmm. it may not be the best option for your pet and it may not be fully safe, you know. Um, and it's not that anybody's trying to hurt it, but it may not just be a good option for you okay. and your pet. Sure. Well, while we're talking about fleas, are there other types of conditions that should require treatment, you know, whether topical or anything like that, that are kind of common in pets? Yeah, well, I mean, you got ticks, right, again, right. that are, you know, and we've been seeing an upswing of those as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's something that you definitely want to talk to your veterinarian about. Um, and, you know, allergies and things like that, mm -hmm. they can be itchy. So there are other things besides fleas that it could be, but you want to make sure when right. you're dealing with an itchy dog, there are things you can control. You can control fleas, like mm -hmm. parasites. You can control their food, but you can't really put them in a bubble and just, you right. know. They you, have to go outside. They have I mean, to go outside, dogs. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you're gonna work, if you have an itchy dog, it may not necessarily be fleas, but mm -hmm. you're gonna wanna work with your veterinarian to figure out what kind of, you know, treatment and what options are best for you. I'm sure, okay. And, you know, what if you, I know a common thing that people see with animals that, and itching is licking their paws. <laughs> Is that, you know, is that something that's kind of 
compulsive? Is that something that's maybe a side effect of something else? I think, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I think, you know, their paws are what is hitting the grass and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going to pick up all the contaminants from weeds, you know, seeds and things like that. So I really feel that they're going to be the first place that they're probably itchy. Mm -hmm. And it's an easy access area. I mean, they're just laying there and they can just, you know, lick sure. right away. Right. So if your dog is really itchy in its paws, something that you can try is using a damp cloth or a hypoallergenic baby wipe mm -hmm. when they come in and just getting that surface contamination off. Okay. It's not going to treat anything, but right. it's going to take some of that grass and things are exposed the to pollen or dew or yeah, whatever's pollen. out in the yard yeah, it'll take it off of there and at mm -hmm. least that's not sitting there all day you know causing inflammatory reactions sure, so. sure. okay um, but yeah that's a very common area that that they will chew at and a lot of times you'll you'll notice because it's darker color mm -hmm. that's from the staining in their in their saliva okay so that's kind of how you know yeah i have itching. white dogs so, so i can really always tell when their feet itch because they're they almost get kind of red they mm -hmm. get red feet or red Fur, yep. you know, yep. so and that's and people you know panic about that, but sure. a lot of times it's just the staining from okay. their from their skin. And what it is what away. is it that causes that color? I think you know? it's the porphyrin. Okay. Um, that's the same thing when you get white dogs that kind of they have the, the tear tears. stains. Yeah, there's yeah. some porphyrin in their tears, and um, the the fur kind of wicks it down their eye, okay. and and then it stains. But you don't notice it in like black dogs, right? But, like white dogs, it's pretty obvious. Very prominent, yeah. Which yeah. I have two little white dogs, so it's immediately prominent. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I would assume too, if you have a dog that's you know bitten the hair off of an area mm -hmm. that maybe that's an indication of something. Yeah, yeah, broken hairs and things like that means they've been chewing. Now mm -hmm. we want to get to the root of why they've been chewing, which could be fleas, allergies, you know, anything like that. Sure. Or even, you know, an injury. You know? Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, broken hairs because they're, you know, they sit there and they just, you know, gnaw on it. Mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. What about hot spots? Is that, yeah. a, is that a thing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's from a dog that just won't leave it alone. Okay. They're just licking, like, and they get it moist. And then the moisture allows bacteria to overgrow and it becomes ulcerated. And then they're licking it because it still itches and burns, but it hurts. And it can, and they can go from pinpoint overnight and the owners you know they're, they're swearing up and down sure. like it wasn't there and, right. it, and I've seen them that you know they explode you know really huge, that yeah. big huh yeah so that takes a little bit more aggressive treatment mm -hmm. than just like a, an itchy dog you know right. that's going to require a lot more in depth but it, it can happen very very quickly from and it can start with a bug bite it could start with you know a little poke of some sort you know mm -hmm. they're outside you know who right. knows what they, they get run into, into like sticks, a stick they bump or into something. your fence whatever the case yeah, might be yeah so that requires a little more in-depth treatment it's still fixable and everything okay. and a lot mm -hmm. of times they end up with those goofy little cones, cones. i was gonna <laughs> say cone is, is the cone a treatment for yeah, that yeah yeah because you really want to break that cycle because obviously their mouths are dirty right and then they're licking and introducing you know bacteria, bacteria. Mm -hmm. and so a lot of times you know they'll end up on some topical treatment and and things like that and people always ask you know can i put some neosporin or something on it and you can, mm -hmm. but a lot of times in dogs, they're like, something greasy is on my hair, so I'm gonna lick it even more. So they end up licking it off. Yeah, so which is kind of pointless counterproductive again. to what we're trying to accomplish. I have so. actually used topical things. We have a dog that constantly gets hot spots, and I've <laughs> put socks on him. Yeah. Like my own sock or a baby sock mm -hmm. or something on his feet, because that'll feet. at least stop it, it for a while. It breaks the cycle, yeah. yeah. And I mean, you wanna allow some air to it, but if, mm -hmm. when you're not home, you know, covering it up, right. a lot of times if it's on their back, you know, we'll recommend, you know, tying a t-shirt mm -hmm, on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and just something to break the cycle, but a lot of times they end up with the with the cone. <laughs> <laughs> and what about hot spot spray? I know you can buy that at you know your local grocery store mm -hmm. or your pet store. Is that something you recommend from over the counter, or is it still you need to consult your vet? I first? would consult the veterinarian because I don't know what a lot of those products have in it, mm -hmm. you know. And so we would want to know. So at least call before you start using it because it may not, it may not be harmful at all, right. you know. But it may also be something that's not going to work. So right. Then you, I mean, it's just you know, it's not going to hurt your pet, but it may not help yeah, it may just be um, something that you're doing for nothing right and we do i definitely i mean i use sprays a lot mm -hmm. whenever i am um, because it absorbs a lot quicker than an ointment so they're not going to lick it off right and i think it starts working very very quickly mm -hmm. and it helps because the key is going to be drying it out because it's all moist and yucky right in there. right so you're going to want to dry it out so i think that's that's really and that's another reason not to you know really compact it and cover it up because mm -hmm. that moisture is just going to sit there and it's just going to keep spreading right so. which drying it out is what you said is the first right. step so right. what is the course of treatment for a hot spot like at the veterinarian's office Office. what do you do so what I usually do is I want to shave the area because I want to see how far the redness okay. extends because even though they've lost probably hair and it's scabbed in one area sure. it probably extends pretty far and that allows us access to see it and then we give it a good scrub you know we want to mm -hmm. get that bacteria off of there we want to get all that taken care of um, and then a lot of times you know we'll do the collar a lot of times we'll do some oral antibiotics possibly some oral steroids or okay. antihistamines mm -hmm. um, and then the spray um, I, I really like the spray and and 
it does burn the first couple times you do it because sure. that skin's ulcerated. But right. after that, it's very soothing. It really dries it out, and I think it speeds up the healing process. So kind of hit it from all directions a lot of times. Okay. So, you know, we've been talking about fleas and things. Mm -hmm. Just to recap, because we're going to run down on time here pretty soon. But can you kind of recap for us um, what we need to look for and what we need to do about fleas for our animals? Sure. Well, I think, you know, if you see an itchy dog, you know, you need to start thinking fleas or something like that mm -hmm. just in the forefront of your mind so you don't forget about them. Right. Um, and I think it's really important to talk to your veterinarian, make an appointment if you are concerned about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, think about really keeping your, your pet on year round preventative so it doesn't mm -hmm. become an issue because it can, like we talked about, quickly get out of hand sure. and, and become a serious issue. Um, they're not that serious in the most for the most part, but if it gets out of hand, it can go downhill very quickly. And so, you've seen some bad cases, is yeah, that right? Yeah, re recently, you know, we've seen an overrun of, you know, fleas and that's what happens is, you know, you get more than one animal, so mm -hmm. they're all contributing and they're all producing more fleas right. and more fleas and you know they can die I, I had one I, I did lose a patient you know two fleas and it it's not something you know that happens very often but when it's your pet I mean it's, sure. it's a preventable condition yeah and I mean people don't think of maybe fleas as being deadly but right. I, I guess if it gets out of hand like they you certainly just said can. obviously the younger and the older are more susceptible sure. but if it, I you know I've seen it and it's it's out there. So it's mm -hmm. definitely, I think prevention is, is the key. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, have you had animals come in where it's just like they're jumping off the animal and yes. you can see them mm -hmm. and? Yep, okay. absolutely. And then, you know, you, you we've had them, especially our groomer too, she rinses them down and the water's red. Oh. I mean, it's just, and it's not, it's the flea dirt and stuff. It's not like it's actively right. bleeding, but there, you know, you gotta think that blood used to be in your animal, and right? Now it's, now it's coming out because yeah. they're sucking it out. So, mm -hmm. okay. Well, Dr. Marcy Kirk, we thank you for coming on the Paul Report today and talking about fleas. Yeah. So we appreciate you coming, and we're about out of time for today. All right. So thank you very much. Thank you. If you're a veterinarian, trainer, groomer, specialist, rescue organization, or shelter that would like to partner with The Paw Report by providing expert guests for the show or animals to be featured on our Adoptable Pets segment, please contact us by emailing kfpleasant at eiu.edu or call 581-6960. Or if you have a topic you'd like to see on the show or questions for our experts, contact us with those too. Have a video or photo of your pet doing something funny or absolutely adorable? We'd love to share it with our viewers here at the Paul Report. Email it to me, Kate, at kfpleasant at eiu.edu and you can see it on our show. Just make sure it's a video taken by you or that you have permission to share. For more information about how to get that video or photo to us, email me or call us at 581-6960. Service animals are helping injured service members transition into a new life. Jeremy Young was shot 12 times serving in the U.S. military. He's among the soldiers being treated at the VA hospital in San Antonio, Texas. Therapy dogs at the Poly Trauma Center help the wounded warriors mentally and emotionally as they're being treated for their physical injuries. Another of those men is Jordan Sisko, who was injured by an improvised explosive device. It was just amazing, you know, she just came right up to me and just started looking at my face. You know, it might have been something good that I ate at lunch or something, but they don't care that I have, they don't ha I don't have any legs or, you know, I don't have a left thumb, you know. Two specially trained dogs are now on the job at the Audie Murphy Veterans Hospital Polytrauma Center. One of them is also an amputee, having lost a leg in a traffic accident. That's pet news you can use. Did you know full episodes of The Paul Report are on YouTube? They can be accessed at youtube.com slash weiutv. Then just go to the Paul Report playlist and select the episode you want to see. 
More information about the show is also available 24-7 on our website at weiu.net under the Television tab. Ready? Hey guys, why don't you look over there? Ready? Three, two, okay, Toby, look. Look, Toby. Look, Toby. You see where I mean? Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Ready? Good boy, good boy. Come on. Come on, Toby.